can we just stop? Isn't it absurd? I mean, California has 48% of the vote. <laughs> like, how? It's as, it's as if they were surprised by the fact that we were having yeah, an yeah. election. It's it's positively third world. I mean, there, there's just no excuse for it. I was reading an article yesterday trying to understand this. Why is the Arizona vote so slow? And this, this article in a local Arizona paper was saying, well, you know, it, it, you can't do Maricopa County as quickly as Palm and sorry, as Miami Dade County because it's larger. Really? I mean, just because it's like <laughs> 1.5 million votes instead of 700,000 votes or something, you can't do it on election night. It's absurd. It's, it's inexcusable. No one should put up with it. Jeb Bush should do a national tour, giving every state a tutorial on how he fixed Florida's system. And everyone should do it that way. It just shouldn't be a question. Right. I, I still don't totally understand why why they're so good at it in Florida. I know why they they, they revised it. But um, I was saying yesterday, it doesn't make your, sta- your state red to follow Florida in its <clears throat> voting procedures. It just makes it yeah. more efficient. Um, yep. And these guys know that they're swing states and that they should have a better system. And now on top of everything, the problems in Arizona are going to cast a massive shadow if Carrie Lake doesn't win <clears throat> because yep. her opponent is the secretary of state who oversees the voting procedure. So I know people don't like election denialism, but that's one state where you do have to pause a little and say, all right, this is going to stink to the average voter. And also, I mean, she's the most likely of any of the Republican candidates to contest her result. I mean, yes. she, she's not going to go yes. quietly. I mean, she was suggesting no. in an interview, I think it was yesterday, that uh, this is kind of the establishment slowing down the count so they can get the narrative out there that Santos did really well and hurt the MAGA candidates and she'll eventually win. I thought she was going to win. I mean, she's an extremely talented, natural politician, but she's a function of just what we saw all around the landscape. Every single Republican underperformed pretty much besides DeSantis, Kemp, and, and a few other well-established incumbents. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah, so we don't know what's happening in Arizona. Can I ask you, because so, some people called Arizona for um, the Dem, for Mark Kelly. I saw it yesterday, and yet not everybody has. So yeah. is, is Arizona called or not? I don't think it's, I haven't seen it called. I don't think it's called, but it stands to reason, just given what we're seeing now, if if Lake wins, I mean, it's going to be just barely. And the master's theory, which I believed in, by the way, was that Lake would win by three or four points and help carry masters over the top. But that's not going to happen. So it hasn't been called, but that's one mentally and psychologically, everyone should be crossing off their list if it's still on. Mm. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably In Nevada, right. you know, and I then- just don't know. You, you, you outlined very well just whatever you, you just read different things given the source but i am just now I, I was so burned you know last week or two by believing in republican optimism uh i had yeah. a republican senator insisting to me yesterday that that laxalt it's there for him he's gonna win and i just don't believe it <laughs> i just i don't yeah. Yeah, i'll, I'll believe it. it if it happens but i'm assuming that's once. not gonna turn out <laughs> Do we know what happened with the polls? I tried to get to this discussion earlier in the week. I, could, I didn't manage it because we were just tight. But do we know what happened? I know that it, the very last New York Times poll, the very last NBC News poll did pretty well in <clears throat> predicting yeah. the ultimate result. But, you know, Trafalgar's taking a lot of heat. Um, RCP's taking a lot of heat. I think those are, I mean, certainly Trafalgar's an operation that tries to forgive the word, but inflate a little bit Republican vote that he believed was being undercounted, which is why he got the 16 and the 18 elections so right. Right. But it seems like that methodology no longer works. So I was was looking at this because one of my colleagues was hammering, and I I love Robert Cahaley. I am sure you've had him on. He's 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 a a a great, entertaining, really knowledgeable guy. Um, but one of my colleagues was hammering him for, you know, he misled us in, in New Hampshire. And then I looked back yesterday at New Hampshire at the real clear average and, and not so much at the average, but just just to get a list of the, the polls. And for the last two weeks, every poll, every poll, only Trafalgar and the University of St. Anselm had a ball deck ahead by one. But every single mm-hmm. other poll had it really tight, you know, um, Hassan leading by one or three points. And you just look at that naturally and you see, well, it was a month ago, it was seven or nine. Now it's, you know, one or two. The momentum's in his, his direction. They don't do early vote. This is a sign of, of a wave and he's going to win. And that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. So Me too. Um, we can blame the Republican pollster for getting a little bit more wrong than everyone else. But everyone got that one wrong. And I just think there was there was a kind of Democratic wave. There was a kind of blue wave at the end that she really won by wasn't nine, by the way, what? Yeah, that, that wasn't picked up. And um, my, my assumption was that all the Senate races, which were really close, the usual dynamic is 
uh, and, and a election you assume is defined by the incumbent's low standing, the undecided voters and the independents, they break at the end and they're going to break against the incumbent. That didn't happen. They broke in favor of the incumbent, or at least in favor of the incumbent's party. And this is still, Megan, I just have trouble getting my head around this fact. That last NBC News poll, yes, yeah, showed Democratic enthusiasm even with Republican enthusiasm. It had some good other mm-hmm. indicators for, for Democrats, but still had a lot of terrible indicators for Democrats. The most important one, Biden's approval rating in that poll is 28 percent among independents. 28 percent. That is not survival. That is not survival. And if you believe the exit polls, there are some people say, you know, you don't because the methodology is not uh, the best, but the samples are huge. Democrats won independence by uh, a couple points uh, on, a, on election day. And then in states like Pennsylvania and Arizona, won them by like 19 points, 30 points. Mm-hmm. That's just hard. It's hard to fathom. So my, my big takeaway in the election, I don't I have various theories. I don't I don't have high confidence. I know I know what happened. But it just seems as though right. the issues I was dismissive of, abortion, protecting democracy, Trump, were more important than I, I would have thought. And uh, if there was an increment of voters that, you know, Robert Cahaley talks about, Republicans who don't talk to pollsters and you don't know what they're thinking, I guess what they're thinking is that they weren't going to show up because <laughs> the turnout was just yeah. much higher for Democrats than Republicans in a lot of these key states. Do you ever wonder if your vitamins are working? Clinical studies show Healthy Cell's new ingestible gel technology called Microgel delivers maximum nutrient absorption, 165% more than tablets. And it tastes great. It's hard to make vitamin liquids or gels taste good naturally, right? But healthy cell products are the best tasting pill-free supplements on the market. Go pill-free and get up to 15 pills worth of nutrients in one ultra-absorption gel pack, saving you money and time and giving you effective doses. Take a single great tasting gel pack at home or on the go. It's great for travel. And you can mix it into drinks or blend it into smoothies. Old fashioned tablets, capsules, and powders contain synthetic other ingredients like binding glues, flow agents, fillers, coatings that could irritate your gut and are just kind of gross. Plus, this is made in the USA. Visit healthycell.com slash Megan, M E G Y N, or use that code Megan for 20% off your first order. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.